Well, I'll be. I asked y'all to like, comment, and subscribe if you wanted more Fallout content from me, and boy howdy, did you deliver. Thanks so much. Today, I wanted to talk about the Chrysler's Patton's cousin, the similarly unnamed armored personnel carrier deployed by the United States Army during the Sino-American conflict. Oh, and for those that didn't know, Chrysler's Patton is the name I coined for the United States main battle tank that can be found around Boston. Check out that video if you're interested. The APC can be found routinely at army barracks, railway stations, and checkpoints at strategic intersections throughout the Commonwealth and Appalachia. It was often used for transporting heavy infantry squads, medevac duties, and for hauling fissionable materials and waste in her shielded hold. Rumors have it, with enough TLC, a few perk points, and a decade or so worth of development time, that this resilient vehicle may be drivable in a wasteland near you. First off, I'd like to coin a name for this weapons platform as well, so I can have a little more fun referring to it than just calling it APC. Especially given I don't really feel the acronym is accurate. More on this later. Tangential fun fact for those that didn't know. Acronyms and abbreviations are different. You see, an acronym is a much more specific version of an abbreviation where the letters must correspond to the initial letters of each word in the full-fledged phrase. Is that a fun fact, actually? Probably not, but oh well. Back on track. Unlike the MBT, there is no real world company that had some crazy plan to make a nuclear APC, let alone that I could link back to the Fallout universe, and I'm unaware of this vehicle being based off of any real world examples. As such, I'm doing a lot more theory crafting to coin a name this time. If I had to guess a manufacturer, I would probably be tempted to go with West Tech, as it is pretty well known that they were a large player in the defense industry in the Fallout universe. But that is not the only reason. West Tech was heavily involved in the development of power armor, including the T-45 and T-51 series. And given that the APC is designed to carry two fully mechanized infantry units equipped with power armor, it seems fair to me that they would have been involved in its development. Although, given my limited experience working in the defense industry for a couple of years, I'm going to go out on a limb and propose this vehicle was a joint project between West Tech and another corporation that had experience in vehicle production, such as Chrysler and its subsidiaries. Although, in this case, I'd expect the other corporation would have been the yet unnamed corporation responsible for creating the in-universe civilian vans given the visual similarities between the two. But given the unnamed nature of that corporation, I'll drop it from the name. So that gives us the make. As for the model, I'm going to name it Hermit. Both because it was designed to be an armored shell for the crew and the mechanized infantry squadrons it contains, but also because we know from Far Harbor, Hermit Crabs like to take residence in its civilian counterpart. This gives us the name West Tech Hermit. Let me know in the comments what you would call the APC, or if you like the name, or heck, let me know how much you hate it. You do you. This episode is brought to you by Sugar Bombs. Get the explosive great taste that 11 out of 10 dentists recommend at a super duper mart near you. Snap, crackle, apocalypse in every bite. Now, let's get into the specifications of the newly minted hermit that we can surmise by using our keen observational skills and what the lore tells us. She is approximately 12 feet tall, 11 feet wide, and 26 feet long, and sports two 76 millimeter ball turrets to the left and right of the crew cabin, which is situated above the engine and can be accessed via the crew hatch on top of the vehicle, as well as a huge, at least for an APC, 105 millimeter autonomous dorsal gun on a turret mount. It is due to these bristling armaments that the APC is actually an infantry fighting van, I mean vehicle. She boasts a large squad bay and a separate shielded compartment that is approximately 10 feet tall, 10 feet wide, and 12 feet long, and is capable of transporting a complement of six seated infantry and two standing mechanized heavy infantry in full suits of power armor. The chassis is mounted on six military grade tires, each with a diameter of approximately four feet and a width of 1.5 feet. I believe it is a safe assumption that the engine is nuclear powered with exhaust ports either located at the top of the vehicle aft of the crew hatch or possibly towards the rear on the passenger side. Based on the multiple ball turrets, I would assume the West Tech Hermit would be crewed by more than one driver, possibly up to three, allowing for each turret to be manned while the vehicle is in motion. Or perhaps a hybrid approach of having two crew members, allowing both turrets to be manned only when halted to unload the heavy infantry squad. 
thus reducing the crew requirement. Although the lore makes no mention of the vehicle's weight or speed, we can infer approximate specifications by looking at a similar vehicle in our timeline, the American M1296 Dragoon. The Dragoon is an eight-wheeled IFV armed with a 30-millimeter cannon crewed by two with the capacity for nine units of infantry. She is nine feet tall, nine feet wide, and 23 feet long, and weighs in at 25 tons. She is powered by a diesel engine with 350 horsepower and a max road speed of 62 miles per hour. Based on this information, I believe it can be assumed that the Hermit weighs at least 25 tons, although likely significantly more, due to her increased size, almost double by volume, and frankly absurd cannon size. So let's say 40 tons as a conservatively low estimate. Based on that, I think it's safe to assume that she would be unable to exceed the Dragoon's max speed and would likely be significantly slower, although it is certainly possible a nuclear power plant would make up for some of the speed concerns due to a higher output of Giddy Up Buttercups. So let's say 50 miles per hour, perhaps. If this all sounds a little bit hand wavy, don't worry, you're not alone. I feel the same way. But it's the best a guy like me is equipped to come up with. Please let me know if you think you have a better estimate. I'd love to hear it. Okay, now I'll attempt to break down what's right with this vehicle and what's wrong. Also, what's just kind of strange and interesting. Let's start with what I liked. There are attachment points sprinkled all around the vehicle, which makes a lot of sense to me. I also enjoy the small detail of what looks to be cameras that I'm also going to assume would have had a speaker function of some kind in the squad bay and another to the rear. This would allow the crew to communicate with the squad they were transporting, letting them know when to deploy and things like that. In addition to using the rear camera to verify the area is clear before opening the hatch and similarly to know when the squad has fully dismounted. So that's a very cool detail that I never noticed before starting to make this video. Moreover, the modeler included what looks to be sensor packages on the top of the dorsal turret and just behind the driver's hatch on the driver's side, reinforcing the lore behind the turret being autonomous. I'm also pleased to see railings inside the squad bay to help the standard infantry and powered armored infantry to stabilize themselves. From my limited experience riding buses, this is an absolute must. Also deserving of props is the clear vision ports found in the crew hatch and cabin. A thing I forgot to point out was missing on the Chrysler's patent. And the clear presence of functional looking headlights found on brackets on either side of the vehicle. I'm also a fan of the multiple ridges found on top of the Hermit after the turret. It looks like these would be useful in organizing and storing supplies on the roof of the vehicle or perhaps for helping to allow more soldiers to ride on top. Now for what I didn't like so much, starting with the fact the Hermit is a wheeled vehicle rather than a tracked one. Both are valid methods to be sure. Some pros of tracks include the ability to provide superior all-terrain performance, a tighter turning radius, a more stable firing platform, and they can support heavier systems. The pros of a wheelbase system include, but are not limited to, increased speed, decreased weight, lower operational cost, although this point is fairly irrelevant with nuclear power, reduced maintenance requirements, a more comfortable ride for the crew reducing fatigue, quieter maneuvering, and more survivability in the case of mines. Given the stated mission purpose and locations the Herman is found in, generally on well-established infrastructure, I must say the choice of wheels does make a lot of sense. However, I do have a couple of issues with this configuration, namely the size of the vehicle and the size of her armaments. Firstly, the weight of this vehicle, at least by my calculations, would seem to put it more in the medium tank classification, and all of that weight would be resting on only six wheels. Seems like that would be a lot of stress and would make the Hermit completely incapable of leaving an established infrastructure. Secondly, that main cannon looks like it would seriously stress the stability component that is not the strength of wheeled vehicles. Although perhaps the aforementioned weight would help counteract this somewhat, I still picture the whole IF van getting backwards 10 feet when firing, or worse, toppling over when firing to the side due to what I assume to be a high center of gravity due to the dorsal turret. I suppose, however, this concern could be addressed by the armaments actually being energy-based in nature which would be fitting considering West Tech was responsible for developing portable military-grade laser weapons. This also tracks with the fact I was unable to locate a site where spent rounds could be ejected from any of the cannons. Somewhat related fun fact, did you know laser beams are incapable of knocking over Nuka-Cola bottles in Fallout 4? I can tell you, I certainly didn't until recently. My next problem, and perhaps the most obvious one, is the fact the Hermit 
is 12 feet tall, with very few angles, and just generally presents a huge hitbox. I do tend to view this flaw with a lot more forgiveness, however, due to the lore of transporting units equipped with power armor. Although, in the opening trailer of Fallout 4, it can clearly be seen that one can sit in power armor, so they did not have to be standing, allowing for the APC to be designed in a different way. Ultimately though, I think it's pretty clear that the squad bay had to be absurdly tall for gameplay reasons. The devs wanted the player to be able to walk into them and loot them, a decision I think we can understand. What is far less forgivable, however, is the shot traps, which for those that don't know, is an armor deficiency that leads impacts to ricochet back into the vehicle formed by the frontal ball turrets. I would not want to be manning one of those things, that's for sure. Also, although the front of the IF van does have more angles than the rest of the vehicle for sure, it looks to me that its design leaves the vehicle's engine and undercarriage dangerously exposed. Another oddity is the couple of plates with what looks to be firing slots cut into them that are randomly bolted onto the side of the vehicle. They just seem so odd and out of place. An additional nitpick I have is with the location of the hinge to the squad bay door. It looks like to me it's fairly exposed and could be damaged with minimal firepower, either trapping the squad in the vehicle or exposing them, neither of which would be ideal. And finally, what the heck is with the four gun ports that appear to be cut into the squad bay? They are clearly meant for the infantry to be able to fire from within the vehicle, at least from the exterior view, but they aren't present at all in the interior. Yikes. Seriously, just yikes. Makes one wonder if the closed version of the APC was made first, and then the open versions were added later, and this detail was just kind of forgotten about. Now in closing, I'd just like to muse about some other details I noticed of potential interest. The bumper on this machine is huge, suggesting to me its usage by riot police was considered in the design. Maybe it's just me, but I can see this being used to plow straight through a mob of rioters on the regular. Speaking of, I'd love to drive one of these things through a pack of barrels. That sounds like a good time. Or the bumper and the strange eyelets found towards the rear of the vehicle could simply indicate that this model of IF van gets stuck. A lot. An idea that really tracks given its weight and wheel configuration and the state we generally find it in. Finally, is it just me or does this thing look a lot like a boat? I mean, the front kind of looks like the bow of a submarine and it's got those stabilizing side blisters on either side. Slap a pair of propellers on the end of that thing and boom! Just like that, you have an awkward IFV and what I would assume to be a leaky gunboat in one package. What value? Hey, look at that! That's the end of another video. Thanks so much for watching, and hey, if you enjoyed the video and would like to see some more content like this, consider yourself a Deathclaw matriarch and destroy that like button for stealing your egg. Also, if you have anything in particular you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments. And finally, if you really, really, really want to see more, consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Spy Dingo, out.